And in the last 20 minutes, we also saw, while you say the game was over at halftime, we saw what I thought was one of the more remarkable things that I've seen in a football pitch, and I've been watching World Cups in football for a very, very long time, and that is the goal that Messi sets up for uh, for Alvarez. Uh, Messi receives the ball on the right inside his, kind of just inside the, the, the Croatia half. He has Josko Guardiola on him, who is not just one of the outstanding center backs in this tournament, one of the outstanding center backs in Europe. He's a guy who's 15 years younger than Messi. Yeah. And you figure, if Messi's going to beat, at least what I figured, Messi's going to do a bit of skill. He's going to nutmeg him or something. He's going to make him fall over, and he's going to scurry away from him. That's how he can beat him. Or Messi's going to draw him and other defenders to him, and he's going to pull off a ridiculous pass, uh, like for the goal against the Dutch, right? Where yeah. he draws people in and whatever. Instead, Messi runs, the ball sticks to his foot. It seems like he takes a million steps, right? And he ends up beating Guardiola through through athleticism. He, I mean, skill, obviously, as well, yeah, because the ball yeah, sticks yeah, to him. Yeah, he's but the he dummy. ultimately runs around him. True, but the dummy, How do you do that? The dummy is outstanding. For me, the dummy is outstanding. I mean, he turns, he turns him over twice, which is really remarkable. But then he goes around him. He turns yeah, but him then over, he's but in the box, so he's, he gives away a penalty, Guardiola. I think Kvaljol uh, is limited uh, once Messi has turned him over the second time because otherwise it's a foul. And But I th- I thought that Kvaljol would have like literally cut him to where before, where at the start of the move. And instead, once I, once Messi's in the rhythm like that, you can't stop him. I, I, I thought that it was... It was amazing. I amazing. thought that was really special. One, one of the, the, the best pieces of skill that, that I've seen um, in this World Cup. Yeah, completely. Uh, now, in terms of numbers, obviously Messi setting up Alvarez for that goal. Alvarez with the two goals. Alvarez has got seven goals now in eight starts for Argentina. He's, he's proven so good. And you know what I love tonight, which we noticed already against the Dutch as well, is that, well, I mean, he, run, he presses a lot and runs a lot. This is what he does. But also, everything that he does, all the runs that he makes that either stretch the defense, he can come short as well, and he did a few times tonight. But he's t- looking for that runs. That, that, those runs over the top and the runs that would stretch that defense, which, for example, Brazil never really did against Croatia. No. But with this time, when you don't just play in front of Lovren and Guardiola, it's far harder for them, like we saw in the first goal, where Lovren okay. is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Alvarez brings you that. It's not perfect, and he's still very young, but what a future he has The amount of, of running that Alvarez does, and look, I, I don't know if he's ever going to be a prolific goal scorer. Uh, on the way over, we bumped into... Uh, Hernan Crespo's in the later next the studio door. next door. Yep. And then just outside here uh, was, was Sergio Aguero, right? So those two guys, two legit goal scorers, sort of forwards. I, I don't know if Alvarez will grow into be that type of player in terms of goal production. But in terms of running and effort, because we talk, you talked about him pressing for Argentina. Yeah, Pressing is something that needs to be collective. When the other guy up with you is Lionel Messi, it's not going to be collective pressing. It means you have to, because otherwise you just run around you know, like a maniac on yeah, your yeah, own. Really, on your own, yeah. And there's an intelligence, th- 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 there's an incredible work rate to the way this guy moves because he's not getting the help from Messi. Understandably, nobody's yeah, having yeah. a knock from Messi. Calm down, Messi fans. I thought that was exceptional. In terms of Messi, some numbers. Messi scored his 11th World Cup goal. Um, the Well behind the record, he's not going to beat it this World Cup unless he scores, I think, five goals in the final. Yeah. Which Messi, but it's still yeah, possible, but <laughs> but he became Argentina's all-time leading goal scorer at a World Cup, passing the legendary Lion King, Batigol, Gabriel Batistuta, uh, and he equaled the record for uh, appearances in a World Cup with 25 held by Lothar Mateus, yeah. a record that we presume he's going to break. He's yeah. going to break on Sunday in the final. Yeah, you would think so, and he, so I think now he's on 25. He will get to 26 if everything goes well for the final which is likely to be his last ever World Cup game. I mean, come on, uh, unless he plays at 39 in the US, which is very possible. But we don't have that vibe and that feeling right now. So he could win his first World Cup and the first one for Argentina since 1986, as well as breaking a record that I'm not sure will ever be beaten or it might be beaten by someone like Kylian if he keeps but playing. Of course, it's Kylian who's going to beat the record. But if he plays seven games every time he plays the World Cup, <laughs> and he's 23 now. He's going to every single World Cup. It's only you know, going to take him four World Cups to get to 28 exactly. and beat Messi's record. Exactly. So, you know, let's see. But still, or, you know what? what a need, special day. He doesn't need to get to the final. It can be a whole bunch of third place games. True, it's always true. so exciting. When you love always that. so exciting. But yeah, so, well, what a special day Sunday could be for, for Messi, of course.
a word on Croatia because I think they gave everything we have. We, we, we've talked about the spirit, the small nation, big boy. Yeah, blah, blah, yeah, of blah. course. Yeah, great generation yep. too. Dalic pushes all the buttons. I, I'm curious to see, talk about generation, I'm curious to see what it's going to be going forward. I mean, you might get another couple years out of the bras. Dalic has said, I want Modric to stay. Okay, Modric is 37. Let's see what Modric says. And to be fair, because I'm writing f on, on Modric for the website, and I looked closely at him at the end. He looked, he looked, he felt like, and he looked like, he can always change his mind, but he looked like this was the last game. And he might play on Saturday in that third, third place playoff game, but he looked the way he said goodbye to everybody, the way he, his body language, and obviously he was gutted to have lost a World Cup semi-final, of course he was. But still, he felt very much, there was a wave at the end towards the, the Croatian fans who were behind the, the goal on our right, where we were sat. He felt the bell like that. But again, he, he might be tempted to stay, although 18 months is a, is a long time for someone who's oh. 37 before the Euros. I, I, I just think, I, I've been so impressed with what Dalic has done in this World Cup um, against Brazil, before that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, against Japan. I mean, I between this World Cup and obviously the previous one where they got to the final and, and lost to France, I thought that was absolutely exceptional. Incredible. A lot of those stereotypes that we talk about in, in sport, about you know never giving up, fighting till the end, digging deep, pride, all those words which are hot air, which every little league coach has used. <laughs> I mean, he uses them to great effect. And obviously he's had some phenomenal players yeah, as well. But uh, you know, hats off to you, uh, Zlatko Dalic. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.